This week, we'll continue our look at the mixing process and delve into the filter effects and the delay effects. And the funny thing is, you know, we called it three separate categories earlier in the class. We said we had one category that was our dynamic effects, which we looked at last week. And then we had a category of delay effects that includes reverbs and delays. And we had another category that were filter effects, which were our EQs and our, and our filters. But the truth is, filter effects and delay effects are actually the same category. In that if you have a very short delay, it actually is what forms a filter. And if you look into the math of filters, it's all based on single sample delays. Very short delays form all our different type of EQs. So we'll start this week by examining that kind of delay spectrum. What if I have a very short single sample delay? What kind of filter does that make? And as I get longer and longer delays, how does that filter change? Eventually, we start hearing it as two separate, uh, as, as two separate signals. We notice the delay, and we move into what we would call delay effects. So the, they are based on the same exact thing, we tend to consider them separately because we use such short delays for filters, and we use a little bit longer delays for our delay effects. But even when we get into the delay effects, we kind of categorize the delay effects by the length of the delay. We have really short delays um, that we actually move the delay time around. We call it the modulated delay effects. And they form things like choruses, phasers, and flangers. And those are great at creating a, a sense of width in the mix. And you might not have considered that a sound can have width. But coming out of a stereo set of speakers, we do. We can have sounds that actually have a width to them. And the crazy part is that can actually get them out of the way of something in the middle of the mix. So being able to control the width of an element can be a really important tool uh, for the mix engineer. As we extend our delay time to longer and longer delays, we'll move to the short delays, which give us a sense of a slapback. Um, a slapback kind of echo, and really do create a sense of space. In most rooms you're in, there really is a very short delay off those walls around you. And it's one of the ways that we kind of locate ourselves. Even with your eyes closed, you can kind of tell what room you're in because of the, the, that slapback or those short delays. We get a little bit longer delays, and it starts being like an echo. Like if you were at a canyon and you called out and you heard yourself respond. And long delays are used, they're used a lot in music production, but usually when they're long delays, we synchronize them to the tempo, and that can be a really useful thing, particularly in kind of dance music styles. And then finally, we'll look at one final type of uh, delay effect, which is our reverb, which is actually hundreds and hundreds of very, very short delays um, that represent all the surfaces in a room to give us that kind of diffuse, kind of almost noisy sound that happens um, after you make a sound in any space. So we'll examine that entire spectrum and look at some musical ways to use the various filters and the various delay effects this week.